Okay, so we're taking a look at the menu and the ways to operate um, the Canon EOS R6. So we'll be going over most of the, the sections in there. We won't go into great depth on all of them, but we'll go over the, using the camera and the different settings. Now, on the R6 you've got a dial, so you've got different... Um, settings on the dial rather than having it on a button or anything and displayed on the screen. So you have to use the dial to change different modes on the camera. So you've got manual, AV, TV, P, FV and so on and then your movie settings and everything. So you access those by actually using the dial there. We can turn the camera on by this switch here. And the main thing is understanding how to focus and, and look through the different things on the camera by using the menu. Okay, now I've turned that on and I can focus anywhere on the screen by just pressing on the screen and that will set the focus to that point. There's different ways as well. If you are looking through the viewfinder, then you'll see there's a button like a cross right on the corner of the camera here that will allow you to access to focus and change using uh, the dial on there. So if you can see I can then use this to toggle the joystick as such. So we press that and then we can change the location by using that. So there's different ways you can focus. You can also drag on the screen, you can set it up for that which is available in the menu. Okay, so focusing in different ways that's to, to set your focus on your camera. So on the camera there are different views and if you press the info button to the right of the screen you'll see the different views that you can get. So they change with each one and you can set up what you actually want on the screen as well. Again, that's more depth and we probably won't go into that, but you'll be able to change that within the menu. So a lot of the things, and this is probably the easiest way to get to your settings on your camera. So we set in manual, we can see at the, at the bottom there, we're displaying the settings. I'm at one 250th of a second. I'm at F4 and I can look, I'm shooting in manual mode and I can see that, and I'll just press that there, let's just take that away. If you look at the, the little ruler mark in there, that you can actually see that that little white line is in the middle there, so that's showing me I've got the correct exposure. And if I was to alter the exposure, so by turning any one of the the dial, so this dial in my case, is, you can change this, but this will change the aperture. And when I change the aperture, you'll see now I'm underexposed. So once I've selected that, I can then go and move it to the correct exposure, or I may want to underexpose slightly or overexpose. So when you set in manual mode, that's how you actually do that. So let's just go down to if I had to press the button halfway down to focus and to adjust my settings, and there we are, we're getting that light. So it's quite easy to, to see straight away what you're getting looking at the screen. And you'll see the same display by looking through the viewfinder. That's the nice thing about a mirrorless camera is you can actually see what's on here inside the lens. Okay, so let's look but how to quickly go about setting most of the things by just simply using the quick menu. So the quick menu can be accessed two ways. You can so that's the cue on there. And then you can see all the different settings on there. So that's the best way to access it. Uh, and we'll start off with the top one, let's just press that again. So if I press on AF, it's the the manual focus, um, sorry, it's the settings for the focus on there. 
So you can see the different settings and at the moment we are set on this one which is one point AF. You can go to the eye tracking for AF and if you go over that we've got spot, we've got one point AF, we've got expand AF area so that's a larger area, you've got around an AF area so you'll get a, a larger selection on that to select from. And you've got zone AF, so it will go to the zone of where you've got your focus point. And then we've got large zone, vertical, so it will then give various points which you can then select from. And we've got large vertical and large horizontal, so it's two different settings for that. The one I use mainly, I use a single one point AF focus. I find that better for that for my use because I want the focus point to be exactly in the right place uh, and I want to be able to select it quickly. I don't want it, the camera guessing what I want so that's why I use that. But when I'm shooting models or I'm shooting animals quite often I will use the eye tracking. The eye tracking is brilliant on this. I mean I can shoot birds in flight and it will track the eye of a bird in flight. But there are times when it doesn't work and people tend to get really annoyed with that and they say well it's got eye focus on, it's not working, it should work, it won't always work, it's impossible in some case scenarios. If you've got a bird say in a tree and you've got uh, a bit of dew on a leaf or something like that, a bright object, sometimes it will pick that up and it just means basically that if you're getting that you just switch to another mode. You know, that all cameras, cameras are not magical. They're, they're good at doing what they do, but they are not magical. They cannot say, well, that's a little droplet and that's an eye. It won't do to that extent. So basically, it works when it works. If it's not working, then you have to select a different mode. Or you can switch to manual focus if you're in a certain position. And manually focus, and that's something I quite often do. So lots of different options for the focus there. So those are all the different settings. And then you've got your setting, and mine's on servo at the moment, usually it's on one shot. So one shot is when you take a shot and basically if the object's moving, it'll just take the shot on the position where you focused, where a servo is good for a moving object and it will locate and keep the focus on that as it's going along whichever focus you've got selected, as long as the button's halfway down, it will focus on a moving object. So a server's quite good for, say, cars or people on bicycles or animals running around, whatever. It will continually focus. I don't have to use that. I do use uh, one shot quite often, and I just keep pressing the, the button a little bit. Some, it's whatever you know style suits you. It's there for... For you to choose there's no right or wrong way you use the method that you prefer okay we then got the card slots so you can see mine is set on raw uh, and both are set on raw so on the card that i've got in there which is two if i've got two cards in there i could select which ones i want to change but i've only got the one card in and if i press that I can then change it, should I need to, to the settings that I want. So I could have one raw and one whatever. Okay, but I shoot in raw, I don't use anything else. Some people shoot raw and JPEG. Sometimes you have got to go into the menu to change that. So we will look if you want one on one and one on the other. That will display and you can change one setting, but I don't think you can change two. So we will look at the menu for that as well later. Okay, let's just get back again. So we'll go to the quick menu again. So the next one is the drive mode. Now at the moment I'm in high speed plus. Uh, you can only shoot in high speed plus with some lenses and if it's not available you will get a warning on the screen telling you that that option is not available for the lens that you're using. Um, or it could be your battery's run down below a certain point if you you must use the Canon battery for that, so it must be the, the battery that came with the camera. You can't use any other battery to get ISB+. So that's important to remember. And the battery has to have a certain amount of charge in it, 
and you must be using a lens that will allow you to do that on some some of the old EF lenses for instance will not allow that it will just be an RF lens um, also on there you've got so where are we we're on the, the drive mode you've got high speed which is high speed continuous which will work on you know on most of your settings you don't need an RF lens to get that you've got low speed continuous and then you've got a timer of 10 seconds and a timer of two seconds like a remote timer as such so that's useful if you're doing a landscape and you haven't got a remote you can set it to two seconds press a button down and the shot will go two seconds after same with the other setting for 10 seconds if you want a photo of yourself you can put it on a tripod press the 10 seconds jump into position and the camera will then take the picture so both have got their uses for that get back again and we have got um, underneath that we've got the metering mode again it's completely up to the user what they select but that's how you would select whatever i always use evaluative and i don't think it really matters which one you use as long as you adapt your camera or in your settings to get the light that you want it doesn't really matter what you are if you've got the wrong value you've got to change it so i usually use evaluative and then i can just change compensate or under or overexpose to get the light that I actually want. So I don't worry too much. Some people are quite particular about what they use. I don't worry too much, especially shooting in raw, because as long as I'm within the margin, I know I can get those details back in post-processing. Okay, so next we have got uh, the anti-flicker detection. So if you can put that on, it'll be for where you've got unusual lighting, like, um, say you're shooting inside a building and you've got led screens or led lights or something like that which flicker very fast and it may be that your shutter speed is too fast and you will get this flicker if you take the picture so if you've got the flicker detection on and you're shooting inside in artificial light that will help you get get the shot and will basically tell you that your shutter speed is too high and you need to bring it down to get rid of that flicker on the the lighting okay and next we've got the white balance so various ones i only ever use because i shoot in raw and some people get really set with this you know if you're in the wrong one and you're shooting raw when you do your raw editing you can change that post you you know it, there's no color temperature on a raw file you can change it so that's really important if you use JPEG then you do need to you know you've got daylight and you've got shading you can see the colors changing on there when you select the different lightings and what happens that's quite blue so that's uh, tungsten light and so on and you've got a little arrow there if you can't see them all you've got 5200k which is uh, where you can actually set the color temperature yourself yep yeah, that's fine if you're using JPEGs you don't need to do that so if you're shooting in RAW, so I always leave mine on automatic white balance. And then I can, if I don't like the setting that I used, I can change that in post. Let's go back again. So the next one along, we've got picture style. Again, more for JPEGs. It will, ch I mean, it doesn't, you can choose any of these basically. So I'll, I'll usually leave it on auto. You've got standard, you've got portrait. So it will basically change the colour a little bit, but again, you can change that when you edit your raw file, you've got the selection to change that at any time. So mine's just on auto. Um, next down, we have got the auto lighting optimizer, so disabled. So that, that just helps with the lighting to optimize the lighting manual or your B settings. Okay, uh, so that covers all the quick menu and the different settings and basics of what they do. Let's have a quick look at the menu. Some of these things are really important. I'm not going to go over every setting, but I will go over some important ones. So if we start off with AF, and we've got different screens going across. 
one, two, three, four, and five, and on number one, there's lots of things there which you can read into. You've got the continuous AF and, and, and all these. Well, you know, you can get those things from the quick menu. But one thing that's really important is if you're selecting eye detection, you've got subject to detect. And if I press that, you can select people, animals, vehicles. If you've got the latest update, always make sure you've got the latest firmware. But if you have, you will have these selections. So vehicles, animals, people, or none, which is off which is fairly straightforward, so I don't know why you would actually select that, because you can turn it on or off on the quick menu. Okay, so mine at the moment is set to people, so I'll vary that from people and animals and whatever. Then, go back to the menu. If we press any of these, so let's just have a look, let's look at two. The focus guide, uh, MF peaking settings, if you manually focus in, you can get different peaking settings. So if we go on that, you've got level and colour on there. So, you know, it's handy when you're doing manual peaking sessions. It will just tell you if you're high or the colour red or whatever. So it will highlight in red the area that's in focus uh, and the level is on high. So it just gives a, a colour indication of what's basically in focus so that can can be useful let's go back uh, and we've got the focus guide which i've got off at the moment and I, I will put that on because that can be quite useful so the focus guide is like two little needles that come in together and show you when you're manually focusing that you are in focus so now we've got that on let's just go back and we'll switch to manual focus uh, and if you look very carefully, let's just focus on this skull here, you can just about see two little indicators there, and it's green, which means it's in focus, because obviously I've previously focused on that. But if I now manually focus, let's just get that, so I'll use the focus ring, you can see now these are going away, and I've got a little focus indicator there that tells me how far out I am. So you can see them spreading away, and as I bring them in, so turn in the focus ring, I can get that, and that will then tell me that's focused. So really, really handy that. When you focus, so we get that point, and it turns green, like that. And then what we can do is zoom in, and just look. So we can now zoom in, and we can see that we're sharply in focus. So we can actually physically see that. So if you're doing some still work, uh, like product photography or things like that, that is really useful to manual focus because you don't want the focus to change. If you've got a product there and you're working on a tripod or any tripod work really, and you want to auto uh, manually focus, which sometimes is really helpful, then that's the way to use it. Turn on those focus peaks and you can see them come together and that really helps you uh, get the focus that you want. Okay, let's just go ahead on that. We'll go back to the menu. So that's that gone over. If we go to number three, you've got all these different cases. Now, you can search for this on the internet. It will give you a lot more because it's quite in depth. Oh, usually use case one so versatile multi-purpose setting which is usually what it's set on but you've got all these different ones you can select so in this case case two continue to track subjects ignoring possible obstacles so they've all got the uses but i just tend to use that one in some cases it's better on video so you've got different settings on video and that's quite useful okay so let's look at four is there anything in lens or electronic manual focus which I've got set on off? A lot of these are different, you know, you've got the different settings. Again, I'm not going to go into those. They're all things you can look up on the internet if you want, need to go into a lot of detail. Initial servo AF point for the eye tracking so you can say where you actually want it. I've got it set on auto. Uh, 
which I find best to be honest. So it will automatically look for the eye uh, rather than you set an initial point for it. So I use that. But again, it's entirely up to you. So there's, there's lots of things on here. One thing I have missed, uh, let's just go back to the camera setting there, which is really important. The shutter mode I've got on electronic at the moment. Now, usually I have that on mechanical. Uh, I was doing some really fast um, multiple bursts of uh, photography, capturing birds in flight, so I've got it on the electronic setting. There is still a little problem with that. I noticed some of the wings on the birds when you're using the electronic shutter at really high speed. It just if the, the wings can seem bent a little bit and it gives a bit of a, a weird shot. It, it actually looked quite quite artistic, but it's not a natural one. So using electrical first curtain or mechanical is probably the best setting. So usually I'm set on mechanical. Again, that's not quiet though. So if you're in a church or something like that and you want to use a setting, then use the electronic uh, shutter mode and that will give you silent shooting sometimes it can cause problems with flash so it's very rare you use uh, that setting for flash you're much better using mechanical when you can and in some cases it, it won't you won't get the same settings using electronic as you get with mechanical you get a much broader choice uh, with mechanical than you do with electronic without any problems of so the blurring and, and whatever so you know, it's it's there, it's got a good use, electronic, but it's not always something I would use all the time. So you can switch and change. That's a nice thing about photography and using cameras. You haven't got to pick one thing and that's right for everything. You do have to change things, so you have to think a little bit. Uh, which is why I don't like phones. They think for you. People take pictures of phones, that's great, and a lot of people love it. It's not for me. I like to be a little bit more in command of what I do. Okay, so um, other important things on there I may have missed. This one's the most important. So on, on number seven there on the camera setting, so on the red setting, the camera there, we have got exposure simulation. Now this is really important because most time when you're out and you're taking photos, you want that on. You want to be able to see uh, what you're capturing using the settings that you've set. So in other words, if you've shot at F7, you know, you shoot at F7, ISO 200 and whatever, and you're looking through the camera, you can physically see with that on whether it's too dark or too bright and you can adjust if you need to. So you're actually seeing a simulation of the exposure that the camera's set on. Now, the only problem is with that is if you go into a studio, like I'm in at the moment, and I'm doing a model shoot or something like that where it's quite dark. And I've even known people sell their cameras because of this because they're saying, I can't use it in a studio. And to be honest, it, this is not something that just applies to mirrorless cameras. If you've got a camera and it's got, and you use live view, you've got exactly the same thing in your camera menu somewhere, depending on what brand you've got, what camera make you've got or whatever. But you will see something similar to expo, uh, exposure simulation. Now, if you think about it, if I'm set to F11, say, or whatever, and I'm in a studio, if I took a picture, it would be black. You know, because it, there's no lights on, the, the flashes haven't gone off. So it doesn't know that when you take a picture, that flash is suddenly gonna throw out a load of light and you're gonna capture a picture. It's looking through the lens and it's saying, look, it's too dark to take a picture. It's not gonna work. So therefore, if you're working doing studio work or in a dark room or anything, and you're gonna use a flash, always change that. So we change it to disable. And then it's a bit like looking through the lens on a DSLR. You, you actually, you can see the object. So really, really important. If you're using flash in studios or anything like that, make sure you turn that on. And obviously remember to turn it back as well when you're outside and you just do your normal photography. Because if you don't and you're looking through the lens, like, oh, it all looks great, everything looks fine. And you take a picture and when you get home, it's too dark or too bright. 
So two things, always check your pictures after you've taken them to make sure that you haven't got that on and if you get a problem it's a good idea to check that and just make sure that you've enabled it again which I'll do now. So I've now got it on enable. So I can physically see now that that setting is okay but if I used a setting that was too too dark I wouldn't be able to see that. So if I was going to use a flash so well do an example of that so if I change the shutter speed to say 4000 and I'm using an ISO of 100 and I took a picture I won't be shooting at 4000 with the flash I'll be shooting at 1 to 125th uh, so we'll just use that setting so we've got a real life scenario and if we look at the screen that's a picture because the camera's thinking okay uh, if you press the button there, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a, a black cat in, in a coal house. It's going to be black. So therefore, if you're going to put a flash on, because it doesn't know the flash is going to go off, or a studio light, we will go to the menu, we go to the Expo simulation, and we disable that. And now if we look, we can physically see straight through the lens, and we can see the object. So when you take the shot, obviously you've got to look at your shot to make sure it's not too dark or too bright because what you're looking at in there is not a simulation. It's just enabling you to see so that when you take a photo, that you can check your image to make sure that it's correct. But you won't be able to see your subject to be able to take a photo. And I've known a lot of people buy mirrorless cameras and saying this is a real problem for me, it's no good, I'm going to get rid of it. And they have got rid of cameras. And that is all it is. Uh, and I'll say that is on DSLRs as well. So in the same scenario, if you was going to use Live View inside a studio, just with a normal DSLR, you still need to do that to be able to see what you're going to take if you're using the viewfinder and not, sorry, if you're using the screen rather and not the viewfinder. If you're using the viewfinder with a DSLR, you get the same view as having this turned off in this case. 